is my number four Vaughn and Bushnell and this is a piece of maple and there's the piece I got off it very nice it's about as good as I can do and this is a defiance hand plane very similar seem to get the same cut out of it. Please keep a piece of paraffin wax handy. I'll re-wax the sole just in case. And I'm not getting any cutting. Go a little deeper. A little deeper. A little deeper. Mm. And I can't get that through. It's digging in. So my conclusion is this blade needs help. So you take apart the blade plane. Oh, looks okay. First thing I do is I look at the iron and it does not feel particularly sharp. If I were to gash at you it would probably cut you but it's not not anything to brag about. Check it for squareness. Looks pretty good. At this point you have to decide if you want to go for full-blown sharpening or just try to rehone the edge. I'm going to shoot for the latter first. Without knowing what angle the primary bevel's at, I'm just going to put it on the stone until I see the water kind of squeeze out from it. Take a quick look. It looks like it's a hollow ground. I'm hitting on the heel down here and up at the tip. But I still don't feel anything particularly impressive in terms of sharpness. One of the tricks I picked up from Rob Kosman, you can just do little swirls in a small area of the stone. You don't necessarily have to keep hitting the whole stone, but you want to do the small areas around to get even wear. Just gonna touch the back of the iron. And there's part of the issue too. You can see it's not particularly flat back here. Well, it took about 15 minutes on this coarse diamond plate, but I finally got it flat all the way across. There's a hollow over here that I couldn't get out, and a little tad over there that I couldn't get out. So once again, I found an iron that's very old, and I didn't have the good fortune that some previous owner had taken the time to flatten the back and make my life easier. But starting to feel a bit of a burr here, so I think we can get this ready to go now. Again, I'm not too concerned with the primary bevel at this juncture. Looks like there's still a remnant of a hollow grind in there. So I think that's pretty good and it looks kind of on the order of 25 degrees. Okay, I think I have a good edge on that. I'm going to turn this over on the 400 grit side to the 700 grit side. Now I'm going to move on to the water stone. This uh, dark red side is 1000 grit, just a little bit finer than this. I 
As I'm rubbing this, I can see little bits of gray forming on the stone. I'm going to flip over to the finer side. So this is getting pretty sharp now, and finally I'm going to move to the strop. pretty good. Other things you can do is try to put a micro bevel on the front side or the back side. Nothing wrong with that. I don't think I need it in this particular case. As I measure the iron for squareness, it's a teeny bit out of square. This side over here is lower. This side up here is a little longer. So now when you reassemble the plane, it's a good idea to take a look at the frog and make sure it's sitting where you want it to be sitting. This one's not very well centered uh, left to right. I think I'm going to try to adjust that a little bit. This plane does not have a frog adjustment screw in the back, so it has to be done the old-fashioned way. And I just loosen the screws, try to get this to jockey where I want it. Very gently tightening the screws, add a little bit of friction. So trying to make sure that the frog feeds down to the mouth. Uh, it seems to be just about good. I'm going to gently tighten them a little more. And a little more. Quick inspection. It seems pretty well centered. Pretty square. Going to assemble the iron with the chip breaker. Once again, try to get it all centered. Push that up to in a millimeter, 32nd of an inch or so. Good place to start. To get this finger tight, and it's steel on steel, but I find a screwdriver gets you a little bit more of a turn. That's looking good. And put it in the plane. Make sure it's sitting well on the yoke. Centered. I'm also going to retract the iron a little bit. And you put the lever cap on. Same thing. Make sure everything is centered. Everything looks to be where it's supposed to be. Clamp that down. And the blade is protruding. And back it out a little more. Sight down the body of the plane. Give a feel. Might be a little bit heavy on that side. I'm going to retract the blade a little more. Another thing you can do is get a soft material and run it over either side. And Actually, yeah, it looks like this side is heavy. So if this side is heavy, then you slide the lateral toward that side and push, kick the iron a little bit. Still seems a little heavy. Going to do it a little more. actually cut my finger on that. Okay, I think I have this set up where it's just touching on both sides. You know, I have to tell you, in the process of uh, sharpening the iron, I cut myself a couple times. How's that for irony? Well, I have it in there and adjusted. And there we go. Here's the shaving. I think that's pretty good.
So there's really nothing remarkable about this hand plane. It was a budget plane back in the 1930s. But with a sharp enough iron, it's definitely got what it takes to do a good job. Now I have two sharp number fours. You know, tools like this, they dull gracefully. So when they're sharp, you're impressed at how well they work. And then ever so slowly, they work a little bit worse and a little bit worse. Until they get to the point where they may not be working well at all. And maybe you've forgotten how well they worked back when they were sharp. But this is a fine performer. So I'm not claiming I'm the greatest woodworker or hand plane tuner in the world. But I think these results kind of speak for themselves. This is sort of an ideal piece of wood. It's a piece of straight grain maple. So I am hedging my bets a little bit. But the point is, this is not an expensive plane. The Defiance models were the lesser brand of the 1930s put out by Stanley. And you can see that this is certainly, for the average woodworker, the mere mortal woodworker, certainly a competent performer. Well, I appreciate you coming by. Hope you got something out of the video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And look forward to uh, catching you all on the next one.